Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. On this to, uh, this evening, because we are way past noon, I was going to say welcome, um, a good afternoon, but we are in the evening, and we're at another fantastic, if I might say so myself. Um, we're going to be deep diving back into Galatians five because that's where we've been doing our hard work. That's where we've been doing uh, our grittiest work, and Paul, by no means, is going to be slacking and trying to help us out so with that being said let's go ahead and get into this truth and first i want to thank everybody for being here more importantly i want to thank the lord jesus christ for being such a beautiful savior uh for giving uh, me and everyone an opportunity to have one more day that we can repent and be clean with that being said, let us go right now. You can see how shiny I am. I'm shiny today. I, I was prepared for you guys today. Today, it was all about armor all and Vaseline. Why? Because I wanted to be nice and pretty for you guys to partake of my horrible face. With that said, let's go ahead and get into our Bibles. Let's go ahead. We're going to go. Now, our Bible maybe look uh, different from yours, which is totally okay. Um. Unless you read out of the Mormon book, then it's going to look completely different, uh, which is not a Bible, by the way. So we're going to go all the way back because we have to have I mean, you got to excuse me for the uh, for the background noise because it's Texas it's hot and it's hot. So I could I would love to be on stream and not have that running, but I would also be melting in front of you because, you know, I made a chocolate. So just please forgive me for that. Um, but just chalk that up to, um, I don't have a screen yet. So with that being said, let's dive right on in and we're going to start at Galatians chapter five and we're going to start at verse one. And then when I stop, we're going to see where we're at today because we got to cover some ground and y'all know me, I can really stretch it out. So let's go ahead and start there. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, Keep standing firm and do not be. I'm at to move this in front of me. Do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I will testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is under obligation to keep the whole law. You have been severed from Christ, you who are seeking to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace, for we through the Spirit by faith are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith working through love. Now we start at verse 7, which we left off at last, that last uh, episode. Now we get to deep dive a little bit more to find out what exactly is going on. Verse seven, you were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion did not come from him who calls you a little leaven, leaving the whole lump of dough. I have confidence in you and the Lord that you will adopt no other view, but the one who is disturbing you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. But I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? Then the stumbling block of the cross has been abolished. I wish that those who are troubling you would even mutilate themselves. Now, all of that we can definitely put into I get it. 
understand where Paul's pain is coming from because the Galatians are listening to the Judaizers. And like I've, I've, I've been saying for so long, it's so easy to get in religion. It's so easy to be in denomination. It's so easy to be non-denominational. Now, they would say, wait a minute, Eric, non-denomination, that means you're not attached to anything. Well, there's always that pastor up there. And as long as he's sharing what he feels and giving motivational speeches and give you the joy, joy, feel, feel feelings that makes you feel oh so good to go to church. Oh, I just feel so much better about myself. I'm going to go out and make put this Bible to to my successful business practice. That is not what the Bible is for. It is not for Tony Robbins It's to not give you some some sugar, some saccharin. Or my favorite aspartame, because I love Big Red, and that aspartame is everywhere. Then you have aspartame K, aspartame K, which I can't remember where that's in, but you know it's bad when you got two fake sugars and one got a K on it. I want to know where that L is. I want to know where the aspartame A is. That's way off subject, but, and I do love sugar. So here we are sitting at, in the midst of, in the midst of what Paul is seeing as a huge problem that is infecting the church. Now, it didn't hit the Philippian church because the Philippian church were strong. They stood in one view. They had everything in common. There was no disagreements about what the gospel is or what the gospel is supposed to be. They were all on the same page. So if it's possible, if people, if people ask me, Eric, is it possible we can all stay on the same page in Christ Jesus? Absolutely. But it's going to take us submitting to the Holy Spirit and being taught by which he teaches. However, we live in a time now where just people just simply don't want to listen. You know it. I know it because I've done it. Remember, before I can say anything or teach anything, if I ain't under judgment from that one, I would say judgment. If I'm not uh, under condemnation of saying, saying hey, uh, when I mean condemnation, I mean like when the Holy Spirit goes, hey, boy, you know darn well that's not what you should be doing. When that happens, that's supposed to be a good thing. And guess what? That means there's no one. And let's be straight. There are no disagreements in the body of Christ because we are to what? Submit ourselves to each other. If I'm sitting up here thinking it's supposed to be post-tribulation, I think it's pre-tribulation. I don't want to hear any tribulation, the Lord says. There should be no divisions in this church. Since none of you know when the end time is coming, since none of y'all and God has not talked to any one of you guys personally. It ain't even up for debate. However, those that trouble the body of Christ will do it because that's what they do. They how how else can can the devil win a house? How else how can the devil get inside of a house by what separating those with disagreements? Why do you think the devil loves divorce so much? Why do you think the devil loves theology so much? Why do you think he loves the non-denomination, non-denomination, the motivational speeches? Why do you think he loves all those things? Because all of it creates a stumbling block to where we are no longer speaking to each other. That's just the way it is. That's how it's always been. See, the devil don't have to make up new tricks. The old ones are still working just fine. Matter of fact, they're still scoring big. They're still hitting three pointers at the buzzer. It's still winning because we're still trying to be inside this flesh and not thinking with the spirit. We can see that because guess what? If they were, if the Galatians were thinking and believing and trusting in the truth, then these Judaizers wouldn't have a chance. So today, when I woke up, um, I remember every time I get before. So let me tell you what happens right before every um bible study every it never fails every time and this also goes for videos as well but bible study more than anything else every time before i get started beginning of that day i'm finding excuses not to do it by eight o'clock that's a fact that is truthful why because let's be let me be honest with you that's a lot of weight that's a lot of weight on your shoulders to always always be in submission to the truth because my feelings want to be spoken about they want to be heard i want to get to the rooftops and bang on my chest and tell you what eric thinks and everything that eric thinks is trash that's right 
I don't have Eric has nothing. I'm not talking about something like third person, like I'm a wrestler, but I don't have nothing of an opinion to share with you that will enlighten and make your day better or your walk better in Christ. It is only the truth of God that can do that work. I can't. People can disagree with me all day long. That's fantastic. I disagree with me all day long. That's even more fantastic. But when it comes to the word of the Lord, that's not up for debate. It is what it says it is. Well, what about interpretation? If you can get your feelings out of the way, which is very tough, let me tell you, I can raise my hand and say, look, I look, starts with me. It's hard. I read some in the Bible. I'm like, good Lord, I don't want to deal with that. It happens. But see, I don't try to find a way to worm around it. I try to be in submission to it. And let me tell you, that takes every bit of faith and trust in God, which Paul is saying, how on earth are you disobeying the truth? So when I woke up this morning, the thing that hit me when I was getting in, I was getting uh, in the car. God bless. Thank you for allowing me to have a car, Lord Jesus. And still PTSD happening in the car because I'm still terrified of driving. So I'm driving like Grandma Willie. Because I'm scared to death. I trust nobody on the road, including myself. So I'm I'm practicing uh, COVID-19 distancing and I'm, as I'm driving, whether that's in drive through or whatnot. Matter of fact, I don't take no chances anymore. If it says a yellow light and I'm at that light, I'm stopping. And that gives me more insight to why are we disobeying the actual facts of the truth, right? So what hit me as I was not hit me, you know, uh, realistically, but proverbially, what hit me was a question. And then this is how the Holy Spirit always works. And it, it drives my brain crazy. Um, so I'm getting in the car. I'm starting it up, letting it warm up because, you know, that's what we do. Even if it's like 70, you know, we warm up the car. The question was posed. Why is it so hard to trust God? And how is it that God understands that? Now, as I'm driving to work, my head is smoking because I'm thinking, wait a minute. I'm trying, Lord, can you help me here? I'm trying to focus on the task at hand, and you pose a question. Now we're sitting here. Now I get it because the Holy Spirit is just perfect. So listen to this. So as we as you see here, as we're looking in the Bible here, and this is of course online. Let's listen to this. This this. Look how beautiful this, this fits perfectly in there. So here we are. You are running well. Look at look at the next verse here. I'm oh, sorry. The next portion of this verse. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Who has persuaded you? That, how do we know that? Because in verse eight, it says this persuasion did not come from him. Let's look at persuasion. Let's butcher that Piesa Monet. Let's just but let's just flat out. We're just butchering it. I'm sorry. Treacherous, deceptive. Let's do a little bit more deep dive because we have a little bit of time. Let's choose. Um, let's go with the CW or CSWB because I do enjoy it. Um, let's see. To persuade, persuasion, conviction only. English. So that's a really good one. So who's trying to get you to stand strong with conviction? You see, the one thing that religion has and theology has is they have a stranglehold over the emotions of the believer and the non-believer that are goats in the church. Remember, we, it's going to be hard to separate the wheat from the chaff. Only God can do that. However, there's some clues and insight. Now, we can't 100 percent rely on it because some people could be in a definitely a season where they just got saved and or we catch them on a day where they're they're definitely knee deep. And the very thing that God has left in them that keeps them humble and going back to him, their personal thorn. We can look at that and go, ha ha, that dude is not saved. I, they can't be saved. We're just seeing that because his struggle is big. That's why the Lord is good about saying when you see someone in transgression, what do you do? You come alongside them gently. He made all the rules that make sense to us. So we don't got that. Yeah, you 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 ain't saved. You're out there doing it again. You come along them gently. Because even when you get angry and start yelling and screaming and start preaching that you are completely unsaved because you don't know no better. And the God is not revealed and took that from you and all that you need to be delivering. You're all that nonsense. And none of it's got nothing to do with the truth. Because here. 
there's a there's a hint now here's the thing we're always gonna have a hindrance when it comes down to our flesh as long as we're in this body still in this rotting corpse we are still going to have those stumbles matter of fact i know it, it makes people uncomfortable when i always go back to luke 17 but this is about the truth right we're not here to, we're not here trying to debate on what could and could not be we dealing with the facts here so let's go ahead and go to luke 17 and he said to his disciples it is inevitable that a stumbling block comes inevitable you cannot me and you brother and sister we can't avoid that stumbling block it's coming it will come to our life however he says but woe to him through whom they come it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than he would cause one of these little ones to stumble that is exactly what these judaizers are doing and that's exactly what's happening today in the christian body right now these spiritual child molesters <clears throat> excuse me these spiritual child molesters are out here trying to get us to follow their idea of what god wants for us when the lord is very clear in dealing with the truth because he tells us what he wants for us so they're promoting us to be disobedient to the truth the judaizers were doing the exact same thing and to make matters worse you want to hear what really burned the chicken you want to hear what really to what, what what really when the when the grease started flying on the fish and it hit paul you really want to burn him up listen to this we got to go down to um a little leaving leaving the whole lump of dough i have confidence in you in the lord that you will adopt no other view so here again you will adopt no other view you won't adopt anything different from the truth that you've been given you will not deviate from the path that christ has given the disciples i mean the apostles and the apostles are given the disciples and we are still on that path today it's narrow but wide enough for it for anybody that can that relies on the truth of the lord narrow as heck i'm telling you it's hard it's hard to find it but just wide enough for one person to fit at a time can't go as a group the broadway you can go any way you want to it, it can go left right center backside it doesn't matter you ain't going to heaven but you can go any way you want all the other stuff you can choose buddhism you can choose noism you can choose motivational speaking you can choose witchcraft you can choose voodoo 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 you can pick roman catholic you can take reform you can be baptist pick one pick one or pick none it's still on the broadway because it means it doesn't matter which road you go none of them will reach heaven however the narrow road there's some things that must be done one of those things is submission to the lord you know it's not a shock that when the lord says love your god with everything you have your, your faculties your emotions your, your all the strength in your spirit and soul love god with everything you have notice he didn't leave any room to say well just love me a little or like me on mondays or you know be cool with me uh, six days out of the week and on the seventh day give me everything you got everything we have with god he's telling us we gotta we gotta go strong and we gotta go hard in the paint we got to go completely with everything we have because there's no room for anything else we cannot afford not to submit to the truth so right now i'm going to go look we're going to go take a look if my if the technology will work for us today we're gonna go um we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the ten commandments here because it's important because if we don't see um the truth we'll never get there we'll never get to the truth of the lord we'll never be able to submit to him so let's go to matthew 22 37 it's just easier to go there let's go to matthew 22 37 and jesus replied love the lord your god with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind here's the thing if the galatians were doing this and this is coming from christ 
to the apostles, to the disciples. And now here's Paul writing them again. Well, not again, but writing them saying, wait a minute. This didn't change. The truth of God has not changed. How is it you have stumbled on this area? Because let's be honest, persuasion is part of the game. The devil is not just just didn't offer the tree. It was always there. He had to be persuasive. He had to put a argument up to make us think, well, wait a minute. What's the big deal? If And see, Paul made sure of that, because here's the thing. What's the big deal if I get circumcised? Why are you getting circumcised? That's the big question. Is it for sanitary reasons? If so, fantastic. Good for you. However, if you're looking at it because you think that that's going to give you part of the uh, uh, of the Israelite promises that God has given them, then no, it's not going to get you anywhere. There are still Christians today that wholly believe if I just convert, uh, if I become a Jew, it just makes things better and easier for me to understand. There is no more Jew or Greek. So what are you doing? Who are you doing it for? God never asked you to do that. In the Old Testament, yes, you had to attach yourself to the nation of Israel. Now you are attached through faith and trust in Jesus Christ. There's no room anymore to get attached to Israel because now Israel and the Gentile world, look, all of Israel ain't Israel either. So I'm just saying Israel as in those that believe. We know that Israel right now is still in rebellion to God. We get it. But we're talking about those that trust and believe in Christ and the Gentiles. And that's in Ephesians chapter two. He took two people and made them in the one man in himself. That's what makes Christ so unique and so powerful. And what he's there for reconciliation is he made one group that Paul is saying, what, there's no more circumcision or uncircumcision. The only room that there is in Christ is one at a time and for the truth. And that's what that's what hits me with the question, right, that I was asked this morning. So what is so hard about trusting God? Like, what's the big now we can I'm going to sit up here and tell you all day long. Well, I trust the Lord every day. Let me tell you, I, I, I would lie if I tell you that every day I'm fighting and struggling in that battle. Now, as much as God done for me, as much as he has given as, as every prayer I've ever asked for, he has answered and I've received that which I asked for. I may not have enjoyed the answer, but he answered me. I have yet to be turned down by God and anything that is going to uh, fulfill his role and what he wants to see in me every day. That don't mean I get everything I want, but I get absolutely everything I need from him. And yet still, I still struggle with trusting God. Because let's look at the reality that we're sitting in right now, because we have to. We have been let down by every human being we've known and have put our trust in they've, they've let us down of course god in all his wisdom thought of that already by saying what put no trust in princes put no confidence in the flesh see that gives us that gives us room not to put people on that pedestal but yet here we are giving people step ladders to get right on up there and they stand in and whether they know it or not, they can't stand on that pedestal because it's it's lopsided. So they're constantly moving and trying to keep it straight. And we're watching them going, oh, this is the role model that I've always had. And when they stumble, you like to hell with that man. He was never whatever. And it's that simple. You know, it's one thing to have role models. Great. Uh, I don't see a reason for them, to be honest with you, but. We do need them because people need some kind of hero. Unfortunately, that also comes with the fact that that hero is also the villain. Remember the old Batman adage, right? You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Well, that, that happens. There's not a role model out there that has not let someone down because they they we just can't hold that mantle. Only Christ do it. And Christ is not a role model. Christ is the model we should follow. He has given us all the tools, but faith. That is tougher than anything else. That's why religion comes along and says, well, if you have this, 
and you trust these things we wrote down, that encompasses all of those things that you're having questions with. So when they're struggling, they go back to their confessions and they go back to their rituals and they go back to their motivational speeches and they go back to their emotions and they get into their Drake feelings and they get into all the, this is a Cincy ad, by the way, someone is selling Cincy and I want to buy one when I get money. Um, Cause I like, I like my place to smell good. Um, it, it just, it's, it's amazing how easy it is that we can take up slavery, put that collar back on and fasten it so tight. And here we thinking, oh, it's like a waist trainer. It's going to keep me right in line with the Lord. And just like waist trainers, it makes you look foolish. Your body don't look like that. Your faith don't look like that. And I didn't say faith. I said faith. We going, we going ghetto. Your faith don't look like that. Your faith looks as it is presented to God, which is God. Look, I'm having some trouble today, man. I'm struggling. I, I keep my eyes on this one thing and yet it keeps falling apart. Father, why do you allow that to happen? Well, first of all, we got to understand that God has allowed us to have our free will. Now, that goes for the just and the unjust. But he does take care of his family. Now, how can we look at that from a practical, you know, you got people, how's it practical? How's it realistic? Well, let me tell you, you can get bullied at school. And when you get home, your mom and your daddy can tell you, hey, I know you've been through a rough one, son or daughter, but I get it. But let's just try. Same as God. It happens out in the world, but in his house, he, we can be healed. We can be comforted. And we're supposed to be able to comfort each other. But since we live in a world that just, well, you, you make me mad. I'll never talk to you again. You know, we have them cowards out there still. We have them weak, you know, mentally fragile, emotionally fragile. And I say that with disgust because it really bothers me when I hear the Christian life of, oh, I just love my brothers and sisters. Yeah, but if they make you upset, then you're the first one to call them fools and then run away from them like a coward. See, that's what part of the flesh is. It's irreconcilable. We don't like to reconcile because that would mean we have to accept the bad. You darn right you need to accept that bad. Because when Christ accepted Joe bad and put it on, he sure didn't complain. Well, Eric, that's different. It is no different. The only thing different is that it's triggering your emotions. And see, that's what a pastor with the smooth tongue and the nice suits or the, the nice cut off jeans and 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 the, the affliction shirt to try to look cool and young. And he's, you know, I heard you say, oh, he's so full of the Holy Spirit. He's full of something. I wouldn't call it. Uh, I would call I would say his pants are holy, but ain't no spirit in there because everything I just heard come out of his mouth sound like if you just change his head and put Tony Robbins on there, be no different. But persuasion is the name of the game. Homiletics. You've heard me talk about this before, right? Homiletics. One of the most dangerous forms of persuasion that there is. And unfortunately, you have people in seminaries right now. I'm unplugging this so I can uh, get that turned back on. We have people right now in seminaries being trained and taught how to use it. Now, I think we went over homiletics before, but for the sake of time, let's go ahead and look at it again. We go on homiletics. And right now I'm uh, you have to excuse me, because as much as I would love to say I'm an ultra professional, I'm not. I'm just a preacher. That's all. So I'm moving things over so I can get at it with a little bit more ease. So we go look up homiletics. Because and I think I've, we went over this before, but I just need you guys to understand how serious it is that this is not something that is just uh, fly by night. There's a reason why your pastor's words come out with such fire and such vigor and such. Oh, my God, it moved my soul. No, it's not your soul. That's your emotions. Like Paul said, that persuasion. You know, that's the that little bit of love, that little bit of leaven that that gets to the whole loaf. The whole lump, I'm sorry. What? A little bit. So you got a little bit of mold like it's not going to grow. It don't take much to poison the Christian life. It doesn't take much to poison your faith to where your trusting in God can become superficial. Because you have that thing that you've been doing. I've been volunteering for years. Uh, serial killers can volunteer. 
serial killers can do great deeds that on the surface looks great they're killing folks in the same breath if volunteering is all it took for you to clean yourself up you wouldn't need jesus so clearly that is that's not the case what it is is guess what homiletics how the difference between preaching and homiletics the difference between preaching and homiletics is that preaching is the act of delivering a sermon of moral instruction while homiletics is the art of preaching and persuasion it doesn't need the truth it don't need none of the truth it don't have to have the truth it doesn't even need to use the truth because it doesn't use it it can mix the truth with a lot it can do everything in the world the first powerful homiletic man or not really man the first homiletics ever practiced in the bible comes where i give you guys a hint a garden and i'm not talking about olive garden garden of eden the devil just put he persuaded in such an easy tongue it was just bleh, and it just it was just came off the tongue so easy and here's eve eating it up and there's adam eating it up and it killed all of us persuasion is easy to do when you have someone that's predatory i know i speak from experience exactly how evil and twisted i was and don't think that i can't pull it off now that's why i have to stick to the truth of god because if it's about winning arguments i can get that argument if it's about winning in a sense of uh, of, of overcoming an objection absolutely because I don't need to have all the truth to get that done. I just have to have my force of will and the, the words that I use, whether abusive or, you know, or convincing when I want to win at something, there's no, there, there is no, 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 no length that I would not stoop. Homiletics just does it in a very dignified manner. That's why they go to school to learn how to give you, these are the three things you can take away for your practical will of life. These are the three things I'm, I'm going to help you unpack this for you. So that way you can understand how to understand God better. And then, you know, you, you know, the speeches. That's your pastor. I'm sorry. But when it comes to the truth, what did Paul say? Matter of fact, let's not uh, let's not mix words. Let's go right to Paul. That's first Corinthians chapter two. And verse two, but we will go to verse one because listen to Paul. He's about to deny homiletics right here. Listen to this. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He didn't come to tell you nothing. He didn't come to convince you of a thing. And has been staring us in the face as Christian this whole time. Why am I trying to convince somebody to love the Lord and trying to convince them that the Christian life is great? That ain't my job. My job is to what? Present the truth. Christ is already called. I got to present the truth so either they can, when they do hear them, because they will, they make their choice then. I hope to God they don't stick with that choice if they say, they say nay, but that ain't up to me. My job is presentation of the truth after I'm just a messenger. After that, that's all God. If I'm in there trying to twist and, and turn and bend the gospel to be to be something that it's not, then I'd be no different than these these Judaizers. That were in here trying to uh, what were they doing? Creating stumbling blocks. And that's what they were doing. They all have millstones around their neck. If your pastor graduated from one of them homiletic schools. Find out what seminary school he graduated from. I guarantee you a millstone is not far behind on his neck. He may have a tie on. He may even have a bow tie to try to look sophisticated. There's a millstone somewhere. Eric, that's the far sweeping judgment you just made. Look, I'm, I'm not saying that it's going to stick to everybody. But if you're in a religion and you have a theology, you got a millstone for a pastor just the way it is because none of that again i say it all the time i'll say it again if jesus didn't make it and didn't join it you bet not be part of it i'm still suffering the ramifications of being part of that useless cult of reform and i call it a cult because it really is is it a cult in the sense of jim jones with the kool-aid no but it damns just as easy no different than islam buddhism 
Roman Catholicism, lack of any of those isms. There's an ism to something. Atheism, there's always a rule and ritual that someone wants to follow because they think that they can outsmart God. These Judaizers think they can do it too. Matter of fact, they're so sure of it that they even lumped Paul into it. Can you imagine that? And that's what that's what you know uh, false false religion does. Well, all religion is false, but that's what these judaizers were doing it's the same thing religious men do today same thing theologians do today well you know christ was the first this what you mean he was the first catholic what are you talking about you know christ was preaching reformed theology back what are you high did you fall on your head what happened how is it christ is being lumped into a man-made thing and that disgust on my face is really that disgust i'm that disgusted i can now have a reference point Hearing someone tell me that Christ preached reform or preached whatever religion you think, I want to Will Smith that moment. I absolutely do. And Will Smith apologized. I won't. It needs to be done. You need to have your butt taken out in the street and caned like in Singapore when you want to put God underneath man-made teachings. I had a young man, a fool, and I, I, I'm trying not to be that rude, but it's a, he's a fool telling me the Holy Spirit teaches theology. What kind of new fool is that? Do you realize there's not a theology or religion or lack thereof that hasn't abused a soul? Jesus never has. The gospel never has. But man-made teachings do. They always do that. And then to make matters worse, that's why they include Jesus in it. So that way it gives them a little bit of validity. It's a lie, but it gives them a little bit of validity. You know, uh, Christ gave the church to Peter. No, when, what, what are you talking about? You know, God has a mama. God ain't got no mama. What are you talking about? It makes no sense. But see, it takes a persuader, a manipulator, a predatory human being to create and weave this narrative that it feels like you have clothing on, it makes you feel, and it's just a loincloth, but it appears to be able to cover all the things that are important. It doesn't cover anything. Because see, that's easier to trust. It's easier to trust in something that you have put your hands on and that you have moved the needle or someone has recognized in you and others can recognize and say, yeah, that guy, he did this thing. But when it comes to faith, that is only revealed by the Holy Spirit. It's not revealed on your belief structure and whatever creed you've promised. It doesn't mean anything that comes outside of the truth of God. If and here's what here's what I always do this all the time. I do this all the time. It never fails. When someone wants to tell me, well, you know, this is true, Eric. If you look at it from a theological standpoint, I said, show me that in the Bible. That's all I need to see. Do you know they will do everything they can? They are better than politicians to deflect what I just asked because they know full well it doesn't belong. They'll do whatever it takes to try to get around it because they just, they know. See, what's not allowing them to move forward is because the cross is a stumbling block. That's why they can't get around it. That's why they have to make up something because it is a stumbling block to just trust Jesus. And that's all. And the gospel and believe that. And that's all. That's a stumbling block. You mean I don't have to do anything else? No. Well, how am I supposed to know I'm on the right path? The Holy Spirit reveals that. He always reveals that. And if you need to get some confirmation, you and another another believer, I don't know how many times a believer will come to me or I come to, or I'll come across each other and we look at each other. We just smile because we just, you just know spirit recognizes spirit. And I'll say something. They'll say something. And it's like, oh, Holy Spirit confirmed that just right now. Yeah, it did to me, too, because he's not teaching one one thing to one person and then on the other side he's teaching something completely different we're all in the same classroom we're all at the same pace of studying i may be at the head of the class or in the behind of the, at the back of the class but i'm not outside the class i'm right there present every day when he's teaching 
The Holy Spirit is always present, every day teaching, and every single believer is at attention. And when roll call is made, the Christian answers. So there is no, well, he told me this is different over here. That ain't the Holy Spirit. That's a spirit with holes in it. And that's the truth. Them holes that you just, that truth that you allegedly is saying true, I see holes right through that, through cheese. I've seen more plot holes in, 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 uh, in some of these theologies that, that Star Wars couldn't close up. You, you couldn't get Steven, Steven Spielberg to close up these potholes because they are flat out lies. And yet the Galatians were falling for it because they didn't trust in God because it's not easy. There is no practical remedy I can give you that God can give you other than submission. And trust me, that's hard as it, you, people don't even like doing their job every day. <laughs> you think about that. Somebody tell you, hey, you got to call these three people. I don't want to call them people. I'm tired of dealing with that. You got to ring these customers up. Oh, my God. There's like three other people over there. Can't they do it? Look, it's hard for us to do our jobs. It's hard for us to be husbands and wives. And you think that faith is just that much easier? It's not. You can become a better husband before you can become a better Christian. True. Because there's still this, this spiritual evidence that can only be recognized by God. And when he recognizes that in you, you will know not by your emotions, not by your mind, not by what you think. It'll be a combination of something beyond you. And you'll be like, ha -ha, you'll cry, you'll laugh, you'll feel good. You'll be like, and you don't even know why your body doesn't even know how to react when the truth of God is given to you. We just don't. We, why are you crying? I didn't mean to cry. Why are you laughing? I'm not finding anything funny because we don't even know how to compute the truth when God delivers it. And that's OK. That's totally OK, because what's reacting is the spirit man. The physical man don't react to things spiritual. He don't. He ain't get, it doesn't speak anything to him. As we're going to be reading in Galatians chapter five, the spirit and the, and the spirit in the flesh, they're at war with each other. So if I come and preach the word of God to you, the spirit, the, 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 the flesh side of you don't want to hear nothing. I know I've been in houses like that. Don't you tell me I've been in the Bible longer than you've been alive. That, that's got nothing to do with the price of tea in China. The fact that that argument even came up is what? That's that flesh. But the spirit man is like, yeah, let's get it, man. I'm hungry. Not hungry. Hungry. H-A-U-N. Hungry. Now, let's keep going because I'm wait, I'm almost at 855, which is not bad. Look at Paul having confidence that they could resist against this onslaught of the Judaizers. And since and not not to mention since. You know, here's the here's the Judaizers. They're doing everything they can to just hammer that point home. You got to be circumcised. You have to trust the Ten Commandments this way. You got to understand that the law is like this. And yes, I know you believe in Christ, but you got to be a Jew in order to pull this off. You got to be able to learn Aramaic. You got to be able to do these things. You got to be able to recite those things. None of those things matter. However, to give validity to the false teaching, they're going to throw Paul in there just like they do Christ. Oh, Christ is a Muslim. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Listen to this. So uh, we went too far. So, but okay. So here we are. I have confidence in you that the Lord, that, uh, I have confidence in you in the Lord. So Paul is saying what? I have confidence in you by what? The Lord's strength. I'm believing in this and trusting this because of God. I believe in you because God, I'm trusting God to do this work. I have confidence in you that the Lord, that in, the, in the Lord, that you will not adopt another view as if there's another view. Now, that goes all the way back to Galatians 1. For the sake of time, let's go ahead and jump on that. Let's go back to if technology works. We're going to go to Galatians uh I'm going to Galatians chapter one and you guys can go there when you get your free time. I hope to God you go there so you can see and not just trust my word on it because it's not it, it ain't enough to sit there. Well, Eric seemed like he would lie to me. Look, I ain't the end all be. I'm not the bee's knees. You got to see for yourself. You have to. 
you got to see for yourself. I'm going to tell you right now, somebody can tell me this is what the law says about this. And I'm like, oh, man, I trust you, brother. I'm going to be like Ronald Reagan. Trust but verify. If it ain't in now, I ain't buying it. And I'll go back and tell him, hey, man, you told me something that ain't in the Bible. Because I want to see for myself, man. I need to see for myself so I know what's going on. Is that bad? No. Does that mean you're not trusting your pastor? No. That means you are trusting your God more than anything. So let's go ahead and listen to this. I am amazed. Here's Paul in Galatians chapter one, verse six. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him. Remember, that's that same him that says you were not. Why are you disobeying the truth? This persuasion did not come from him who called you. That's verse eight. Same him when he said, I'm amazed that you are quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ. He didn't call the Galatians by the law. He didn't call the Galatians by being Jew. He didn't call the Gal he didn't call the Galatians based on how well they kept the law. He called because the call went out to all of those. To every bit of flesh on this earth. That call went universally out. The time is now. The kingdom of heaven has come close. It is time to repent and be reconciled to God. That message has been consistent and constant since Christ's baby toe touched on this earth. The minute he came and just took breath, that call was coming. It didn't change. I'm so amazed or I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. You're telling me that he called you. So Christ called you and then ushered you to be a Roman Catholic. Hey, man, come this way, Eric. You go right up here and be a Baptist because that fits you. Uh, go reform because, you know, they. you think you smart. Let's go over there because you think you just know it all. Go over there and be with the reform and them dudes. Uh, Willie Jones, I want you to go over here to be Pentecostal because you, you know, that's fine. And I want your brother who likes to yip and yell. You can go to char you go to charismatic uh, Pentecostal, and then uh, you Edward go over there to Presbyterian because you too you just need to have your books because you don't know nothing else if unless you read and get hit in the head with you go right over there. God didn't do that. He did not do that at all. There's only one church, one pasture, one gospel, one truth, one God, one Savior. One reconciliation. There is nothing else that can be added to it. Can't nothing be taken from it. Ain't nothing you can add to it. You can't take nothing with you. That's the kind of ignorance that the devil relies on that you are sitting. Can you imagine? I want you to think about this, guys. And I hope this doesn't insult you because that's not what I'm trying to do. Imagine how arrogant it must be. If you are trusting and believing in a theology of some sort that you're so confident and comfortable in your what? As you're working through your own salvation with fear and trembling, you're telling me that you're so secure that you have time to go learn something other than what Christ has done? That uh, that takes, you must be better than everybody because Paul ain't even reached that. Paul has not even reached that. What does that tell you? Paul has not even reached that kind of level. But see, that's what the devil does. That's what sinners do. Well, I understand I got faith, but if I learn this thing over here, it's going to get me closer to God. Like I said, that young brother that told me, well, I know theology is not right, but it, it, it enhances the scripture. All right, man. That's like putting gravy on ice cream. How does that enhance the flavor of the ice cream? It just don't. But that's what these Judaizers are hoping for. And again, just real quick, just so uh, we can get to some, because we're at nine on one. I think I did pretty good today. So let's read down. I have confidence in you and the Lord that you will adopt no other view, but the one who is disturbing you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. So Paul is saying, look, whoever has convinced you that this way that you're thinking is fantastic, God's got him. That millstone around their neck. I ain't got no doubt about that. You show me a reformed or a Roman Catholic, I'll show you the millstone. I'll show it won't take more than 10 minutes. I'll show you how heavy that millstone is and when it was placed around his neck. And he's just, we're just waiting for it to get tossed in the water. That's the best that and that's that's Jesus saying, Man, woe to them. It'd be better if you go out and drown on an anchor. 
than messing around with his boys, his us, his sons and daughters of God. Listen to this. But I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, because here's the thing, they they accuse Paul of preaching circumcision. So it wasn't enough. So the Galatians probably were like when they came and said, you got to keep the law. And they says, and you and this is what you have to do. You need to be circumcised. You have to do these things. The Galatians are probably like, oh, wait, what? Oh, and, and Paul preached it. Oh, okay. And that 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 little bitty nudge that they needed to say, okay, well, if Paul's teaching it, it must be okay. But see, Paul shut that down to watch it, watch Paul. But if I still uh, uh, still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? See, it didn't hold any water. Well, well, Paul Paul preaches. Um, yeah, Paul's preaching circumcision. Look, he's right there preaching circumcision. Well, then why am I still persecuted? That's what Paul's saying, right? Why am I still persecuted if I'm doing this, this, this? If I'm preaching circumcision, then shouldn't everything be rolling right? Shouldn't everything be easy? Shouldn't I be part of the crowd? Shouldn't I be part of the reindeer games? But he's not. But they drop. They they use some name dropping in hopes to persuade them. To get under that knife to put them back under condemnation put them back into slavery because those men did not trust god they could not see or do anything without saying well i just i want to believe but man this is hard i need to see some practical reasoning behind this you, you hear i hear it all the time and let me tell you i'm it's not that i don't understand or feel that for you because i do i get it we do need some of that but it just ain't coming in some practical means it's not a life hack for the bible there is no life hack for god there just isn't it's gonna be grueling it's gonna be tough i'm looking up something real quick it's gonna be grueling it's gonna be tough it's going to cause sacrifice you will have to give up some things you just do you're going to have to give up some things. You're going to have to let go. You heard that you always hear, let go, let God. Well, you, you do, but you got to trust God. You have to trust. Him. There is no other way um, to trust. You just have to. And how is it like, how tough is it? How, 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 how heart wrenching, how soul wrenching is it when you are still in, like, let's say, so God took a lot of things away from me, you know, things that you didn't even think were like, I can't believe I'm not drinking what that was for me. I'm using me as an example. Drinking when back when I got saved, I was going to uh, Applebee's like daily, you know, I was always there, always drinking, I had a good time, met some great friends, you know, yada, yada, yada. After I got saved, all of a sudden, before I knew it, I was just going home. I was excited to get in my Bible. There were times I didn't turn my TV. I was like waiting at I was waiting at work, getting excited because I just wanted to go spend time with God. You see, but once that new car smell wears off, allegedly, religion wants to sneak in and say, well, you need us to carry the rest of the way. And it becomes so easy to put that slave collar back on. It's easy. It even come with be it can be it got bedazzles on it. It's got a little bit of Gucci, uh, 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 or some Gucci silk underneath it. You got a beautiful collar, but you're enslaved again. So Paul is sitting up here saying, "Man, if I preached the circumcision, why am I still being persecuted?" That goes all the way back to where Paul had to uh, when he came amongst Agrippa, and they were like, and they were trying to put um they're trying to put paul to death that was the thing i always tell you go read this because this is amazing this is in acts chapter 26 listen to this so um their whole thing is that here's the thing they're saying well why are my own people attacking me because i'm preaching what christ crucified christ returning from the dead and forgiving sins and that's why they want to kill him those same men that are <clears throat> allegedly converted into christ are still persecuting Paul in the same way as that they were trying to get after uh, Paul before Agrippa said, hey, man, get that dude away. Uh, bring him here. I'm not going to let them kill him out in the street because they want to kill him dead. Why? Because he's a threat. Why is he a threat? Because he preaches freedom in Christ. People like me, you that don't trust religion, we're the, we're the bad guy. Let me tell you something. Religion and theology persecute the Christian church. That's who's doing it. it's not Democrats, it ain't Republicans, it's not atheists, 
is coming from religion and theology. They're the persecutors. Why? Because here we are standing in faith and struggling, and they're saying, we can take all that away. Just believe this right here and just smear that manure right on your face. It's, it, it, it helps exfoliate skin. It just doesn't work, man. doesn't work. So I've held you guys enough. I love you very much. Um, you guys are amazing and matter. You matter to me greatly. Um, I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for um, your prayers, your concerns. It got me through some rough spots in my life. And so I appreciate you very much. And I will see you soon in Jesus's name. Uh, amen. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.